All right. Hey, if you need notes, please raise your hand. I want to make sure you have notes today. As we continue in our Rooted series, and a very important couple of weeks here. So um, we're going to dive into something really, really important that culturally um, there's some things going on that you need to know about, and then I really want to help you with this. If you're brand new to Skyline Church, I would love to meet you, um, and I, I'll be out in the lobby, and so would love to meet you out there and hear your story, as long as you're not really long-winded. It'd be great just to meet you and say hey, and how'd you, how'd you hear about No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We have other people to listen to your story, but I, I would love to know you a little bit, at least a little bit, you know, at a surface level, probably, but that's okay. I mean, it's a start, and uh, I want to welcome Lakeside in and say hello to, to Mike and Patty Parrish over there, you guys. Thanks for joining us in Lakeside, and everybody else that's joining us in Lakeside. And then Mary is back in Kansas at the Buffalo Ranch. Hi, Mary. Glad that you're there. Yeah, let's welcome them in. So glad that you guys are here. Also, Betty's joining us from Colorado, and Samuel is joining us all the way from Washington. So let's welcome everybody in. So glad. Just so you know, I check in from time to time on where people are watching from. And I found out we have people watching from the U.S. Virgin Islands. And I just thought it's important that I go check up on that church <laughs> out there and make sure everything's okay. Yeah? It's like a mission, right? Missions trip thing? So God bless you guys in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I'll be visiting soon. <laughs> Lord willing. All right. We had an incredible membership dinner um, recently, last week, and it was just an unbelievable time. Hundreds of people there. And I, I let you know that because we're in this series called Rooted, and people are getting rooted in their faith. They are signing up and saying, I want to be a part of this, and I want to be able to grow in my faith. I want my roots to get deeper, and I need a community of people to help me with that. We all need community. We need it. And so I'm just so thrilled with how many people are really plugging in and getting rooted. And those of you that did take that first step, uh, the next step starts next week. And so I want you to make sure you register for that to get to step two as part of our core four series. Okay, what we're doing now, we have seven steps, but we really want you to at least get through the first four, the core four because those are going to, we're going to give you all the information you need to really be able to help you get rooted in the faith. These are the fundamentals of Christianity to where you're going to have everything you need to really be able to grow. So that's the core four. If you're interested in becoming a member and you haven't been to the membership dinner yet, again, it's just vision, mission, our philosophy, where we're going, where we're headed, what we believe about some of the cultural stuff that's going on and the stands that we take, all that stuff. You can register now. Registration is open for the next one. That will be coming up on March 30th. So please register for that and get going uh, there. You can register on the website or on your connection card, just FYI. But that, that leads you down the road to getting your roots deeper and deeper. We have a step. Everybody has a next step of faith, and we make sure we facilitate that for you. And then Pastor McGill already mentioned baptisms coming up on Super Bowl Sunday to have baptisms coming up, more people getting rooted in the faith. I want you to sign up for that if you haven't been baptized. It'd be an incredible time that we're going to have. And also, if you want to wear your favorite team's jersey on Super Bowl Sunday, please do. Okay, we're going to have some fun on Super Bowl Sunday and Saturday before that as well. But wear your favorite team's jersey, and uh, we will definitely have fun with that. All right, we are in a teaching series, as I mentioned, called Rooted. This is part four. And we're, so far we've looked at how important goals are in your faith. Having spiritual markers, having goals for spiritual growth is important. And you, you come to January and so many people have resolutions, right? It's usually physically, physically we have these resolutions. We want to lose weight or exercise more, whatever it might be. But so often we forget about them the very important spiritual goals. We've got to have spiritual goals. If we're really going to get rooted in our faith, be able to handle anything that comes our way, we have to have goals spiritually. Then last week, Pastor Dennis from Global Missions, he shared with you about 
the importance of being rooted in missions and living sent. And so today we're going to pick up and we're going to talk about this whole idea of cultivating a healthy mind. We're going to talk about cultivating a healthy mind. This is so important right now in our society and what is going on. And our main scripture is going to be Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. I'm going to be in Romans today for a good portion of it. We're going to be in Romans 7, Romans 8 as well. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless our time together. Lord Jesus, thank you for a chance to gather, a chance to worship you through singing. And now we come to you to worship you in the word. And we're just asking you, Lord, to do something special in our hearts and particularly in our minds as we dive into this important subject that, again, you didn't leave this one um, out there. You speak specifically to this issue of health when it comes to our minds and the vital role that it plays. And so, God, would you speak to each one of us individually as only you can do. Help us to not just hear the words from your word, but to actually put these things into practice in our life because we know that's where the difference is made. As you said, now that you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. So, God, we love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Listen to some of these statistics. This is stuff that is going on because of what we've been dealing with this last couple of years when you talk about the mandates and you talk about the lockdowns and you talk about all these things. The suicide rate has gone through the roof. We talk about that in generalities because we all know it. People are committing suicide at higher and higher rates. Between the ages of 12 and 17 years old, it has gone up this last year 51%. 51% between the ages of 12 and 17. You think? You think school mandates and all this stuff has anything to do with it? You better believe it does. And by the way, I got an update on the school. We got some more meetings coming. Uh, things are moving forward. Things are moving forward. So keep praying, okay? We haven't forgotten about that. We got a lot, a lot of research, and uh, we're excited. We're excited. So it's coming. Keep praying about that. But suicide rate increasing. Uh, addictions, substance abuse, and um, overdoses. Domestic violence, 30% increase worldwide since COVID. Worldwide, 30% increase. And then they said this year, deaths of despair, they call it, when it's anxiety, depression, deaths of despair. There will be 75,000 people that will have a death of despair this year. 75,000 people. Because why? It's a loss of hope. People are losing hope. And we said it from the beginning, you got to have hope to cope. And so I'm going to give you some tools. We're going to talk about this because it's not talked about enough. Mental health is pushed far back in the church. It's pushed far back in other places in our society. But we got to talk about it because the Bible talks about it. The Bible doesn't leave this stone unturned, and we shouldn't either. The effects of COVID lockdowns and mandates on mental health, suicide, far-reaching negative consequences. Now, while we don't have a lot of control over what the government does, we can control our reaction to what happens governmentally. We can control our reaction to the laws and things that come down the pike. Our circumstances are what they are right now. Here is the message summarized. I put this in your notes because I could summarize this whole thing in one sentence. And it's this, God is far more interested, far more interested in changing your mind than in changing your circumstances. I'm going to say that again. God is far more interested in changing your mind than he is in changing your circumstances. If we're going to have strong roots, if we're going to be rooted in our faith, then you must, listen to me, you must work at it. It is cultivation. Okay, that, that is so important that we actually cultivate a healthy mind. Because at the end of the day, you probably heard this before, it's not what happens to you. It's not what happens to you. But really, more important than that, it's what's happening in you. And there's a lot happening to us right now. And it just seems like it keeps coming, doesn't it? It keeps coming. You're like, hey, it didn't work two years ago. 
but let's keep doing it. And they keep doing it. And so what do you do? You, you start get, losing a little bit of hope. Like, hey, is this the way our country's going now? Is this really what's going on? It's like, yeah, that's what's going on. So, so what do you do? Do you just lose all hope and give up? No. No, no, no. Our circumstances, they might get worse, folks. It might get worse. What are you going to do? Keep losing hope? No, 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 no. No, no, we're going we're gonna to make sure we cultivate a healthy mind. You know, when a farmer works a soil, he, he's working or she's working that soil to produce an intended crop. But what do they do? They don't just throw seed out there and go, see in a few months, I hope it all works out, right? No, they got to till the soil. They turn it over. They put nutrients in it. They water it. They care for it. And then what do they do? Well, if it's your own garden, you know, maybe you have a garden in your backyard, you put a fence around it. You make sure you dig down real deep so the gophers don't get under and the rabbits don't get over. That's just the reality. What are you doing? You're protecting that crop. You're protecting, you're cultivating it, and you're working to defend it. That is so important when it comes to our mind. We have to do the same thing. It's going to take effort, and we talked about in the very beginning of this series. It's going to take intentional effort. we got to be intentional about how we cultivate our mind. And I want you to write this down. I put it in your notes there. I must work on the soil of my mind. i got to work on it. i got to cultivate good things going into your mind. Good fertilizer, not the manure of the world, but organic, good <laughs> compost things going into your mind. And you have to be vigilant about what goes into your mind. Look at Webster's Dictionary definition of cultivate. I put it there in your notes. It's to apply oneself to improving or developing, and it says one's mind or manners, to cultivate. I'm telling you, do not let your guard down. It's too easy to just say, I've had enough and I'm just going to do whatever. You don't want to do that. All right, and, and coming up on a quarter century of full-time ministry, I can tell you I've counseled thousands of people over the years, and there's nothing I haven't heard at this point. Nothing surprises me. When someone gives me bad news, it's like I've heard it, seen it. But I can tell you the vast majority when it comes to couples— the vast majority of couples that end up divorced or break up, it's typically because one spouse, and it's sometimes it's both, both spouses, but typically one spouse has stopped cultivating their mind. They've stopped doing the work of protecting their mind. And so they've let things in that end up causing problems. They didn't build a fence around their mind. They allowed the varmints of pornography or anger or bitterness or envy and other sins to eat the roots of their mind or the bark beetle of another woman or another man, the thoughts of that person. And they thought to themselves, well, what's a little harmless little fantasy? Not a big deal. Not realizing that it's eating the core. You guys know about the bark beetle, in California at least. All you got to do is drive out to the mountains and look at all the dead pine trees. And you can go Colorado, you can go other places. Bark beetle has infested the United States. What does it do? You can't even see its entry point on the trees. You can't even see it. It's such a tiny little hole. But what does it do? Over time, the bark beetle eats its way to the core of the tree. And that, that tree could look normal for months and months and months. It could even look normal for years, what's going on? The bark beetle is slowly making its way to the chief conduit system of that tree, its core. And once it gets to the core, it starts eating the center of that. Then all of a sudden, you'll notice the needles are dry. That could take months or years. It's completely cut off the nutrient flow to the tree. Now, it's the same thing that happens in our minds. We let the bark beetle of a little bit of this and a little bit of that in, and here's what happens is at first we don't even really notice a change. 
we're desensitized to it. All the while, that bark beetle thing, whatever it is, is gnawing its way to the chief conduit system of the nutrients that we need, and that's our mind. We're letting it infect our mind, and all of a sudden we're like, man, I just feel dry spiritually. You know, I feel distant from the Lord. Well, what happened? We let that thing in. That bark beetle of whatever it might be has started to eat its way into our mind. We stopped doing the work we used to do. Now listen to me. I want you to write this down. If you don't do the work of cultivating your mind, the devil will be glad to do the work for you. Okay, that's just the reality. You could even put in parentheses next to the devil, put the world. The world be glad to do it for you. Just have no fences up on your mind. This always cracks me up when I talk to people and their kids are going off the rails and they're like, well, I just wanted to raise them with an open mind. I didn't realize. You don't raise your kids with such an open mind that their brains fall out, okay? <laughs> Give them some structure, man. Tell them what to do. Well, I didn't want to make them go to church because, you know, I wanted them to come up with their own beliefs. Well, they will. They will. The world will teach them. All right, they'll tell them what to believe. So either you do it or the world's going to do it, parents. You better tell them. If we don't do the work cultivating our mind, man, I'm telling you right now, the world will do it for you. This is so important. I'm going to do multiple weeks on this topic, and you can tell I'm a little fired up. I'm a little excited about this topic because I think it's going to help so many people. All right. You've come to the right place, though. If you're looking for help, you might be sitting there going, okay, great. Well, I need help now. I need help today. There's a lot of people struggling with mental health. And I want you to know we're here for you. But we need to know you're struggling. And so write it down on the connection card or do it digitally. And you can get an appointment with our counseling team, okay? And we'd be glad to help you. We want to make sure you have the help you need. We're not just going to tell you, go do this, go do that. We're going to help you with it. We're going to walk with you through it. We've said it before. It's one of our core values. You will never walk alone. If you're part of Skyline Church, this is your church. You will never walk alone. That's our promise to you. So we're going to look at why I need to cultivate a healthy mind, and then we're going to talk about how. Next week, we're going to talk about how do you do it? How do you actually cultivate that healthy mind? Today, though, we've got to understand why. Romans 12.2. Notice what it says in Romans 12.2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. <laughs> you can just highlight that, circle that, just keep that in front of you, right? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. Now, notice it says let God. We have to be open to God transforming us. You actually have to be open to saying, God, I want you to work in my life. God, I want you to do something in my life. God, I'm here. We say it all the time. Say that prayer. Say the prayer. Whatever, God. Whatever you want. Whatever you want, God. But you have to trust that he has what's best for you. That's the big thing for so many people. No, God, I think I know better for my life than you do. Well, that's what's got you in the predicament you're in. You think you know better than God. He says, it says, let God transform you. You got to let him. Let him transform you into a new person. How? By changing, say it with me, the way you think. That's how. You have to change your mindset. You have to change how you think. And I said it earlier, God's far more interested in changing your mind than in changing your circumstances. We often go, why don't you just take this away, God? Get this out of my life. If this wasn't here, I'd be fine. If this wasn't going on in my life, I'd be okay. But this is happening, and so, right, we get mad at God. All the while. While God may not have made that thing happen in your life, he, he is not the author of evil. While he may not have made that, he will use it, and he's going to build your character through it. He's going to help you grow through it. But we're always looking for the easy way out. Take away the problems. Take away the pain, Lord. Take away the suffering, and take away the sickness and the sadness. But no transformation takes place in your life until your thoughts change. That's the only, only way you're going to have transformation take place in your life. So 
It's of vital importance to getting rooted in your faith, to have the mindset that you're going to get rooted in the faith, to have the mindset that no matter what comes at me, I'm not going to falter. I'm not going to fail because God is with me. Think about it this way. How many of you have heard of the biosphere or the biodome? You guys have heard of that thing over in Arizona? Yeah. So years ago, uh, they put a bunch of people in there. I think it was eight people, maybe six people in there for two years in the biodome. Perfect. They tried to create a perfect atmosphere, right? Uh, perfect weather inside there. The whole thing. They did the whole thing. And they had to be in there for two years. And they noticed something. Trees started to grow in there. Of course, they planted them, the whole thing. Perfect soil. Perfect amount of oxygen. Perfect amount of sunlight. Everything was just perfect around of nutrients in the soil. Everything was just right. But something began to happen after a while. Those trees, they had grown to about 10 feet or so. They started to fall over. How? Why? There was no wind. There were no storms. There was no rain, no hail, no drought to where the roots had to go down deep and find water in a drought to where the roots in a storm had to spread out and thicken up to be able to handle that storm. And they realized for a tree to be hardy, for a tree to have strong roots, it needs some difficulties. It needs some wind and rain. It needs some trials and tribulations. And just like trees need difficult elements to grow strong roots, we as human beings need some difficult elements if we're going to really grow strong spiritual roots. If everything were easy in a perfect environment, our spiritual roots would remain shallow right on the surface. And the first little issue that would come by we'd crash down. And isn't that what happens with so many American Christians? Let's be honest about it. We live in a culture where so many things are handed to us. For years, we've lived in an environment where we've been hand-fed, nutrient-dense, environments just right. We've been given all these things. And all of a sudden, let's just say COVID comes along. And what do we see? Churches closing, people scattering of the faith. Everyone's leaving. Oh, no, it's, it's going to be tough. What happened? Well, there hasn't been enough persecution in America. There hasn't been enough persecution of the church in America. Because when the church, just look at history, when the church is persecuted, it grows every single time. Whenever governmental officials or whoever tries to come against the church, every single time, it's like the roots go, okay, let's go, baby. And they start getting deeper and stronger, and the church stands up. Listen to me. This isn't easy, but you need some persecution in your life if you're going to grow strong spiritual roots. And I'm not talking about the person you're living with, okay? <laughs> Let's not get into marriage stuff. All right, I'm not talking about that. You need some challenges to grow those roots. Our roots otherwise will be so shallow. Jesus said, take heart when troubles come. Didn't say if. Take heart when troubles come. Why would he say that? Because he knows how good they can be for you and me. He knows how good they can be. Take heart. He goes, I've overcome the world. What does that mean? If you got Jesus, you got nothing to worry about. No matter what you go through, he's like, I'm going to be right there. Not just next to you. He goes, I'm going to be right in front of you so I can follow him. Use him as a shield. That's his promise. But we got to change our mindset. So here's three reasons why I must cultivate a healthy mind. Three reasons why. Next week, how. But right now, why. You might write these down. Number one, because my thoughts control my life. My thoughts control my life. Every single action begins as a thought. If you don't think it, you don't do it. That's both good and bad, isn't it? If it's good thought, then you're going to do good. If it's a bad thought, then obviously you're going to do bad. Everything starts here. The mind is a control center. Look at Proverbs 4.23. It says, be careful how you think. Read that with me. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Circle shaped there, would you? 
The Bible says, it talks about the power of your mind, the power of your thoughts. It has an incredible ability to shape your life for good or bad. Incredible ability. Listen, if you accepted a thought while you were growing up that you were worthless, you can never do anything, if you accepted that thought, you're ugly, your mama dresses you funny, whatever that thought was that people said or someone said about you, if you accepted that thought, you've lived like that. You've gone through your life thinking you're not pretty enough or you're not handsome enough, or you're not talented enough. You've gone through your life going off of bad information because someone said that to you and you accepted it. You took it in. Your thoughts control your life. It's so important. We're always interested in our feelings, and, and we're going to talk about feelings during this series, but, you know, we think that our feelings shape our life, and they really don't. Some people say, I'm a feeler. I go off of feel, my feelings, how I feel that day. What you have to understand is that's a very childish way to live, actually. Um, it's, it's not a grown-up, mature way to live. Ask any person in jail, why'd you do it? And they'd say, I didn't. No, most of them would say, <laughs> right, I didn't do it. You ask any person in jail why they did it, and most of them would go back to some kind of feeling. Anger, I felt like it. Jealousy, felt like it. I wanted money, that's a feeling, right? Um... My youngest, he went through this phase of when I'd ask him, why did you do that? Which, as a parent, not, not a, ever a great question. They don't have great answers. But <laughs> when you say, why'd you do that, right? And he went through this phase. His response every single time was, and he would do this, because I felt like it? <laughs> That's what he would say. And I'd say, oh, okay. Well, you're not going to be able to ride your bike or your skateboard what, 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 why? Because I feel like it. <laughs> I say, see, you understand? There's actually some logic behind this that we got to talk about, why you did what you did. And it's like so often we, we think, well, I'm going to go off my feelings. I'm just going to go how I feel. Your feelings are important, okay? But we're going to talk about that later, as I mentioned. But they don't shape your life. I want you to write this down. Your feelings don't shape your life. Your beliefs do. Your beliefs do. And it doesn't even have to be true. If you believe it, it's going to shape your life. The Bible tells us, again, Romans 12, 2, be transformed by changing the way you think. Secondly, I want you to write this down. I got to cultivate a healthy mind because the mind is the battleground for sin. It's all in your mind. It starts in your mind. It's where I win or lose the battle. We think temptation is out there. I'm tempted by that thing out there. Temptation starts inside. It's internal. The book of James talks about that, and we'll talk more about that next week. But there's always a corollary desire inside you for that thing that's out there that tempts you. And we all have different temptations. Some of them are common, but we have different temptations that start here. All, right. All temptation happens first in your mind. I remember my coaches, my rookie season with the St. Louis Cardinals, got all the rookie pitchers together. They said, men, how many inches does it take to win a baseball game? And some guys shouted out, 60 feet, 6 inches, which is the distance from the mound to home plate. Other guys shouted out, 17 inches. That's the width of home plate, although I always felt like it was four inches. But anyway, it's uh, based off of how the umpires called the pitches. But 17 inches. And he said, no. He said, the difference between winning and losing game is six inches. The six inches between your ears. I'll never forget that because he said most games are won and lost before you even step on the field. Mentally, you have to be ready. Mentally, you have to be there. And you have to believe that you can win that game. It's like the great Hall of Fame baseball player from the New York Yankees, Yogi Berra, once said, baseball 
is 90% mental and the other half is physical. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> but some, some players are beat before they even get on the field. Right? Just they've mentally just lost it before they even get on the field. Now, today we're going to have a couple of big football games. And if my adopted team, the Kansas City Chiefs, come on, right? Now, as they play the Cincinnati Bengals, the Bengals have to believe they can even have a chance of beating my homies, right? And we know that's not even going to happen. They're already defeated. They're going against the Chiefs. <laughs> Go Bengals. Are the Bengals in the NFL still? Because I didn't, they haven't been in the playoffs so long, nobody remembered. Like Bengals, where are they from? Well, nobody knows, right? Because last time they were in the playoffs, I'm pretty sure the Chargers played them and Dan Fouts beat them, right? That's what I remember. It's been a long time, man. Long time. But we're glad that the kitty cats are back, all right? Meow. <laughs> A great game today. But they got to, I could talk football and baseball all day. Okay. But they got to believe, right? They got to believe it's a mental thing. And, you know, when you talk about the sins of pride or lust or bitterness, hatred, anger, resentment, envy, and worry, those things, they're not out there. They're right here. They're all right there in the mind. That's where the battleground is. Paul, man, Romans 7, this is such a powerful powerful section of scripture all right and i wrote about this in particular romans 7 in my book shark week available now <laughs> i don't know why i said that it's available and yeah you discount in bulk anyway uh i hate it when pastors do that but anyway this is what he says in romans 7 it's so so vital he says i love to do god's will so far as my new nature, was he talking about this new nature? That's his being a Christian, right? He said, my new nature is to be a Christ follower. And he says, man, I love to do God's will as far as my new nature is concerned. But he, he recognizes the fact that we live with both natures, that until we get to heaven, we're living with both natures, okay? He says, I, I love to do God's will as far as my new nature is concerned, but, but... There, and I emphasize that there, there is something else deep within me. Now look what he says here. That is at war with my mind. Come on, you ever feel that way? Huh? I mean, this is the reality. We're at war in our mind so often with those, those things that are out there. He says, and, and look at it. He says, and wins the fight and makes me a slave to the sin not the sin out there, the sin where? Within me. In my mind, I want to be God's willing servant, but instead I find myself still enslaved to sin. Now, Paul goes through this battle in Romans 7. He talks about this back and forth and back and forth. And this is the thing I'm so passionate about is so many people give up on their faith when they've made a mistake. And it's like, Paul did? Paul had these issues. He, 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 he wants to do God's will, but he's still struggling with the sin. He still struggles with the things of this world. He's still struggling with so many things, and he's like, but I want to be God's willing servant. He says, the battle is right here in my mind. He talks about later how he was freed from that through Christ Jesus our Lord. But the battle is real, and it's a fact and he illustrates that. I want you to circle a few words there in your notes, okay? Look, at this is so important. Circle the word war, war. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the, the reality. The mind is a battlefield. It's constantly. Circle the word fight. The word enslaved. And the word slave. What's he saying, man? The battle's in the brain. It's an intense battle. Why is it so intense? Why is it so intense? Because your mind is your greatest asset. Listen to me. And Satan wants to control your mind. Don't, don't miss that. He wants to control your mind. All right. Why do you think Twitter, Facebook, 
Instagram and every other social media outlet doesn't want any other view on their platform other than the one that they push. If you have a different view on the vaccine, if you have a different view on the mandates, you're kicked off. I have been kicked off Facebook from my blogs, I don't know how many times. It's a, it's a badge of honor. <laughs> it's like, okay, I guess I'm right. <laughs> they put me on probation again. It's like, what happened to free speech? What happened to, um, hey, I, I have a different opinion here. Let's argue it. Let's talk about it. You can't do that. It's now out. Just one way. Our opinion only. Our opinion only. You get all these warnings if you post anything different. Why? It's mind. They want to control your mind. They want to control your actions. They want to control the whole thing. Why? They're... Satan is the prince of this world. The Bible is very clear about that, okay? And so we have, to, we have to ready our mind. We have to cultivate our mind. Our thoughts control our life. My mind is the battleground for sin. And here's the third one I want you to write down. I must cultivate a healthy mind because it's the key to peace and happiness. Bottom line, the end of the day, no matter what the circumstances are around us, no matter what, this right here, what we do, how we react to it, is the key to our peace and happiness in this life. Again, we can't control a lot of the circumstances around us. We can move out of the state. A lot of people are doing that. We can get out of that particular situation. But if I haven't learned the skills that the Bible talks about that I need to learn, <laughs> then I'm just taking me with me to the new state. And there's no guarantee that that governor is not going to change. And so it's learning these mental skills is vital. It's a key to our peace and happiness. And if you learn what we're talking about over these next couple of weeks, your peace of mind will go up dramatically. An uncontrolled mind, a mind without fences, leads to stress, worry, and anxiety, bad choices, and regrets. And I'll close with this. The Bible says it like this in Romans 8, 6. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I'm going to let my sinful nature, remember, Paul just got done in Romans 7 talking about the struggle. In other words, if I just go with the flow, if I just go with whatever's out there, take it all in, dabble in this, dabble in that, let everything in that comes in through media, not have any fences around what I watch, what I listen to, what news channel I watch. Like, you can be in big trouble mentally. He says, letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit, there's that word again, letting, letting, letting the Spirit control your mind leads to what? life and peace. So that's why we're talking about this. So many people do not have real life. They're just existing. They're not truly living. And Jesus made it very clear. I've come that we have life and have it to the full. To the full, he said. But yet we're in an era where so many people are just trying to survive and just trying to get by. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. I created you to thrive. But you can only thrive if your roots are strong. You've got to have those strong roots. And there's work to do. There's a lot of work to do to cultivate that strong mind. It only takes a moment to let the fences down or let that split in the fence happen and let those varmints in that want to chew on those roots. And you're not able to produce the fruit, the life of peace that God promises. Next week we'll talk about how you're going to do that. Man, I got so much to say on this subject. I'm excited about it. I'll probably write about it too on the blog. If you're not following my blog, I don't know if you're going to heaven, but I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't guarantee. 
But if you go to jeremymcgarity.com, follow my blog, and every time I put a new thing out there, I like to add content. I can't speak to you for hours and hours on a Sunday. You're like, thank God. But I'm saying I add content there that goes with the message so that you can be up to date, as well as we talk about faith and cultural issues and things that are out there. JeremyMcGarity.com. Follow me on there, man. I'd love to tell you more of what's going on. I can't wait for next week already. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you that this whole idea of the battle for the mind is real. And there's a struggle. And right now, people that can hear my voice, whether online or in, the, in one of our campuses, right now, they are struggling mentally. It's hard. And the enemy wants to control their mind. And so, Lord, we're asking first and foremost protection. Protect the minds of your people. Protect their minds. We trust you, Lord, for your help, for your guidance, for your direction. Now, peace of mind and peace in your life starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can go after all the things in the world, but they're all going to leave you empty. Every one of them. If you want real life and real peace, no matter the circumstances, no matter what happens, then the key to that is a relationship, not a religion, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you don't have a relationship with Christ, I want you to follow me in this prayer in the silence of your heart because he can hear you. Okay, you have to understand the ABCs of salvation. The A is to admit you're a sinner. You've done things wrong. You haven't lived a perfect life. The B is to believe that Jesus Christ is the only one who died for your sin. He's the only one that can get you to heaven. And C is to choose to follow him every day of your life. If that's you, follow me in this prayer in the silence of your heart because he can hear you. Dear Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I've done some things wrong. I haven't lived a perfect life. I've made mistakes. But I believe that you died for those mistakes. You died for my sin. You paid the price so I don't have to. Today I'm choosing to follow you. And if you said that, welcome to the family. Others of you, it might be time to recommit your life to Christ. Maybe you've drifted. Maybe you've let the bark beetle of sin and lust or whatever it might be, that bark beetle just start, it's gnawing away at your core. Let's get that out of there right now. All you got to do is recommit your life to Jesus Christ. Say this in your heart. He can hear you. Dear Jesus, I'm recommitting my life to you today. I'm repenting of those things that have come between me and you and caused me to feel dry spiritually. I need your help. Guide me and direct me, I pray. Lord, thank you for each person that said yes to you for the first time today and those that recommitted their life to you as the cross remains lit as a visible illustration of you changing lives in our church and in our community. We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you, Lord.